guys, here we go. Game number one in this Platinum League matchup. Going to Black Pink LE once again and a ZVZ. All right, hopefully this is quick. No, this might be a quick three game series after all. The orange Zerg pieces at the top right hand corner are by none other than a good climate inside gaming. He goes by the name of Inner Orbiter. And in the bottom left hand corner, representing Meep, the green Zerg pieces of Tarisky. Tarisky? Tarisky? I think it's Tarisky. Tarisky sounds right. Too risky. All right, no, there it is. Too risky. I get it now. Okay, it's too risky versus Inner Orbiter. Now let's see what happens in terms of ZVZ action. Will these players decide to open up pool first, or will they decide to go for the hatchery? And we do have a pool first from Too, too Risky. All right, all right. Here we go. Here's where the cheekiness begins to, you know, go its colors. Yep, Inner Orbiter opting for that natural expansion. He wants to get the economy game in his favor, which is something he's quite good at doing. But will he be able to go ahead and hear that lead? Guys, this is the only replays we have for Group F, by the way. It's a three game series between these two right here. So, too risky, one, I guess. Now. When people open up pool first, generally you're expecting to see some aggression. It wasn't a 12 pool, so it's not meant to be all in. It was a pool in the sense that I want some lings out to defend, and then I'm going to take my expo. But she does, uh, too risky here, does go ahead and take that expansion. But no bailing nuts and no crazy ling swarm popping out here just yet. Like, no 8 lings on the production tab right away, or... Along those lines. And the block boost is on the way. This is more or less looking like he just wants to use it for defense. You just go ahead and send out two so far. It will be scouted by Inner Orbiter's Overlord as it moves floats across the map. Well, he will be well prepared for this kind of aggression. I mean, there's four lings on the far on the way. His spawning pool just finished up. He's getting his queens out. And Inner Orbiter does have lings of his own popping out. So... Inner Orbiter should be able to defend this very, very easily. I don't see it getting too much damage done in terms of, like, you know, running up here and sniping out, like, 10, 12 drones. Four things are more or less for scouting purposes, but too risky. Living up to his name going, eh, that might be too risky, mate. Six things versus four. Now, Inner Orbiter, however, is showing he wants to be the aggressor. Now he says, yeah, I see some things. What you got going on? And these things will end up getting up. Now, there's no bailing nest follow up here just yet. Either player. As I say that, Too Risky does have one about halfway done. And there is a spine crawler on the way, so he should be able to defend this very, very easily with 16 lings popping out. This shouldn't get any damage at all. And speed about to kick in. Yeah, he should be able to defend this very, very easily. And Big Mama Queen will live to fight another day. As these slowlings of Inner Orbiter are just going to awkwardly hop on home. Uh, they will end up dying in the end. Wah, 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 wah. Anyways, uh, Too Risky decides he's going to move across the map with his bailing nest being done. And the wall off here first Inner Orbiter coming down. This spy crawler kind of in the wrong place. Always kind of want to put your spy crawler behind the wall. Not use it as part of the wall. Queen getting tucked in here, trying to make sure she can get as much damage done as she can before she gets picked off. Bailey's not morphing in just yet for either player. Throws are going to have to be pulled here for Inner Orbiter to hold this aggression more than likely. Looks like he will not end up pulling drones. There you go. Hey, mate, you're going to have to pull him eventually. They'll lose another Queen otherwise. And the economic damage being dealt there. Seven drones being killed so far. Bailey's morphing in now. But, you know, too risky, he's just like, yeah, I'm gonna build some lings and wait. He didn't flood any more lings across the map just yet. Did it look like he wanted to go for a third base? Imagine he will eventually end up doing. I mean, he did get some economic damage done. But in the end, the drone count's still about even. But you don't want to be building drones at this point. Like, you want lings as well. You're gonna need lings in this army, especially when your opponent is showing aggression. Plus one range is on the way, so we should see a Roach War and follow up as well into a Lair into Roach Speed. 
Now, I shouldn't say you don't want to be building drones. It's more or less, in that situation, it looked like your opponent could show more aggression, but he didn't. He just went on home and backed off. After dealing a little bit of economic damage and forcing a round of drones to be made instead of a round of lings. Overlord here for oh, Inner Orbiter are going to get picked off by Big Mama Queen. Actually, the Lings are going to come down and possibly end up saving it. Very well done by Inner Orbiter there. To keep those Lings and keep that Overlord alive. Arson Banelings back home. It looks like he's trying to bait this fight here. Yeah, this could actually be too risky for you, mate, if you decide to keep going. But he's going to rotate up here. Go off this third base. Bailing's trading out one bailing. These are find a better connection. One bailing or one link for one bailing. Except two there. Gonna come down here and clean out the last of his opponent's army with some links. Much better connection that time around. But again, the roach one is on the way as well as 16 links. And all the bailings have been used. Except for three. Okay, so he does have three bailings left. Which means this link aggression shouldn't get any kind of damage done. At this point, these links are used for defense. Let's just say that again. ZBZ is one of those matchups that just don't follow much. I, I really can't tell like which way it goes, and it looks like too risky. It's saying, "Yeah, that's all you got for army." I'm going to attack, and I'm going to catch a lot of your links out here in the open. The banelings are done now. This could just very easily swing inner orbiter right back into this game. If he finds a decent link connection, we'll be right back into this game. Is he a carefus? Hey, it's plus one melee. One baneling versus the world. Will the Baneling find the connection he needs to stay in this game? Moves up the ramp now. Nah, about face. No third all the way for Inner Orbiter here. He's on two bases. The opponent is building Roaches now. Iron Roaches on the production tab. Plus one missile to plus one melee. Some pretty nice connections from both sides overall. No more Banelings on the production tab for... It's too risky here. He's actually building 10 drones. He wants his third base saturated. Queen gonna get picked off. He's actually just leaving the Queen to get picked off. Like... Okay. But now there are Roaches out with plus one range. But uh, it's also plus one range or plus one melee. And it, the upgrades just now counter out each other. So like... If you had enough links to just surround all the Roaches, you'll win up, end up winning with the links. The Roaches do get in here, and Inner Orbiter, I think, is just really starting to fall apart here. He's not really finding any damage with these Ling Run buys. He hasn't yet. And he, he tried to poke at the front, and he just needs to get his Roach count up. But if he doesn't have that plus one range upgrade, that is just going to be the factor here in this coming fight between these two armies whenever they do decide to end up clashing. But, uh... Anyway, he's only on one gas as well. Two gas. He doesn't have the gas bank for this. Putting too many banelings, I think, in the early game is definitely hurting his gas count. Missed something there. Like a, maybe a drop or something went off. The 60 lings have died so far. Or too risky. Not really a lot, sure, but like, that's 60 lings. A ling count, like, it's just crazy how many lings wind up do actually dying out over the course of a game. But here we go, both players posturing up for a fight. Too risky trying to bait this Baneling connection. He does find a third base of Inner Orbiter going down here. He's gonna micro this Baneling around the circles. That make sure it doesn't get picked off. This is like a really crazy, like almost like a skill matchup. But uh, the plus one range here, Inner Orbiter needs to concave. He needs to find himself a decent concave. He's morphing into Ravagers, trying to extend the life of a couple of these roaches and add in the uh, Force APM basically out of Too Risky. Against that Kuros of Bile. He just adds on 10 more roaches. Like it's nothing, you know. Because he has the economy. He has the ability to just max out very, very easily on roach. And nothing but roaches. Inner Orbiter has really just been like pressuring into his opponent's base way too much in my opinion. So like honestly, if he would have just like back up a little bit and try and get a roach count started. You know, get upgrades started. He has 28 links on the production tab. That is an answer to what he's about to have to face here, but these links need to be with this army. He's adding in more Ravagers for more Curse of Bile. Links will find that these Ravagers are morphing in and are about just finished up. 
that he's trying to find a decent curse bow here. The links are just now popping out and running across the map. I think he's taking this fight a little bit too early. The concave here for two risky is just slightly like better in all regards. Curse of Bow is gonna force a little bit of micro finding some decent connections there. And these links just were never able to find a really good position to fight in. Because this wasn't much surface area for him to get in here and get this surround, but it does enter orbiter clean it out though. I mean the Ravager is throwing more curse of bow, you might find a decent connection. But I have to micro back once again so the first of all does connect here. I think in the end it's just too risky it is gonna wind up closing this game out here very shortly. Even pull some drones to help out in this fight. Gonna put them right back to mining here. Uh, too risky does work for some razor of his own. So again, it's that range upgrade that really killed it there. Like his lings of inner orbiter never found a really good position in this fight. He's actually morphing in Bane Links to add in a little bit more splash damage and trying to run them into the counter out some of the Links as well as run them into the Roaches and try and find some damage there. Now, you know, Orders positions are actually really not the best of ones you want to be in as a ZVZ. He's building drones here and this late in the game, he's way behind in the worker count and the army count. Wow, worker count's actually even still 46 to 45. Very interesting, actually, that's still at that point. Plus two melee and plus two range coming out for both players. His inner orbiter once again is going to move across the map. These banelings are, the are going to get cleaned up. Now the banelings here, however, can add in a little bit more DPS, but the splits are already pre-set up here for too risky as he is uh, already in a very good position here. Oh, we're going to get sniped out. These banelings rotate around and find a pretty decent connection. With his drone line, he might find some damage and get a win. But again, he's not really finding anything at all. He can kill some larva. Oh! He does force the drones to run right through the army of his army, so... He does find some economic damage there, and he does just take a lead in the worker count. Uh, I thought that was, a uh, In her orbiter, the Arge or the Ravager there. It's like, are these two armies just going to hang out next to each other? That's rather awkward. But in order to going to add on a few more gases, he's, he's a tech up. He needs to get something besides Roach Hide or Roach Ravager here. He is going to go ahead up to a fourth base. But now, back call, we do have plus one range or plus two range on the way. It's a plus two melee. Roach speed is on the way. This has been a really interesting game in terms of which way these upgrades go. His inner order has been fighting into this Roach army with nothing but zero zero Roach Ravager and plus two links. On top of that, his opponent at 2 0, he's just honestly just take a lot better situation. His links aren't even upgraded. These are just like cannon fodder, basically, for the Roach Ravager of Inner Orbiter. I think he is going to be able to try and find a run by here. I feel like he's trying to find that fourth base of Inner Orbiter who expanded to the north rather than the south. But he is going to find this army. Upgrade okay, starting to kick in now for Inner Orbiter, however, who's been able to get his. You know, his macro up and running a little bit better, getting that worker lead a little bit. 48 drones to 37. Uh, too risky. It hasn't really been adding on any drones at all. He's just adding on army at this point. Fourth base does get found, and it might wind up actually getting canceled here. Getting taken out before Inner Orbiter can get here to defend this. Nice defense there, getting some things over here to defend. Gonna go ahead and run them right down into this drone line. He's trying to focus on drones, but he doesn't really focus on the drones, he's focusing down more lings. As we start to reach that, reach that 13 minute mark, their orbiter might actually be able to start to wind up taking some pretty decent fights here. If he can get that army supply caught up. It's 119 to 88. And upgrades are now starting to start to mirror each other and start to reflect each other a little bit here. It's plus one carapace is on the way for both sides. You get plus one melee for the links of two risky versus the plus one range coming in now for inner orbiter. So like this fight coming up here really decides it. Here we go, they're gonna get on top of each other. These banelings just awkwardly dying at the front looking you accidentally control clip them and just detonate them all at once. The links actually kinda trapped the ravagers here against the wall. The Hydra DPS hopefully is what's gonna win this for inner orbiter, but it looks like they're just too light. No upgrades here, no DPS really three upgrades. And in that regard, that might just wind up starting to close this game out here for too risky in game number one. As he is just going to be able to push across the map. Alright, to find some damage. Let's 
Chris Brennan's EVZ is actually really funny. Because they can both help and hurt your opponent. As well as it helps and hurts you. It's like a double -edged sword here. Your opponent does, if it's Zerg, gets an advantage on creep as well. Uh, anyway, we have some more Ravagers being morphed. It looks like he's going into Lurkers, actually. So if these Lurkers finish up, that might be a deciding factor as well. That like, could very easily wing this game back into Orbital Stable. He does wind up losing that fourth base up in the north. His opponent does take one down here to the south. So he is ahead in that base count. He is going to be able to start to climb back up in the economy advantage here soon as well. Queen's up here getting caught off creep a little bit, so he's not going to be able to take a good fight there. He's losing a queen. Lurkers trying to catch up with this army. Now the Lurkers are both a good and a bad investment here, because with the Ravagers on the map, Corsa Bile can still hit them even when they're burrowed. But it looks like he is going to have to burrow these Lurkers, and he might actually pull out game number one here. I mean, Corsa Bile is going to rain all over them. Really well played move by Tariski to take that fight there. As he is, is going to force his opponent back across the map. Only one lurker left to his name. And that's why I'm going to wind up getting picked off as well. Again, I think Trubisky just has more than enough here to close this game out. Yeah, GG's going to get called out right here. And it's going to give game number one to Trubisky. Let's go find game number two in this ZVZ matchup. They just download them all. Alright, so we go from Black Pink to Catalyst LE in game number two. And currently down 1 0 in the series is this man right here from Inside Gaming in Orange. The Zerg pieces of Inter Orbiter. Inter Orbiter. And his opponent in green, the Zerg pieces of Too Risky. Who is currently up 1 0 in this series. Now, will Inter Orbiter be able to reverse sweep his opponent? That is a question now that we have to kind of take a look at. And if he can close this game out and tie up the series, he's in a very good position to do so. But as we reach into game number two. See what both players have in store for us here. The Overlords are just going to go ahead and start floating across the map. Put a headbutt with there is a buddy on the other side, the Orange Overlord, at this uh, battle for territory. As two queen or two brood brothers say, "Yeah, I don't like you anymore. I'm taking your swarm." I was taking a quick drink of some fluids there to keep that throat moist, dry, not too soft. Tired out. Like two ships in the night, though, slowly floating, passing one another to make their way across the map. So, too risky. Going to go ahead and play a little bit more of a natural game this time. He did go for a, a pull first. Do a hatchery expansion, so he definitely favors that pool first type of play. I completely agree with that in all regards. You know, I like to have that spawning pool down and then expand. That way, personally, if I'm playing Zerg, I feel a little bit safer. Like ZVV, or CVP, TVZ, you know, anytime I offer a Zerg, I will always open up like a pool first. And honestly, it's a bit of a mind game when you do that. Like, you don't know if your opponent is actually going to be that super aggressive player. Looks like Inner Orbiter also opted to go into like a pool first or a little bit of sw quicker spawning pool after his natural expansion there. He does have Lings out, but his Lings opponent is also building Lings and Queens and getting speed. we are really curious to see as whether or not he decides to play super aggressive this game. 
Ling's on a patrol path waiting for his opponent's Ling's to come up and we'll use tackle attack on one another. How to know your opponent is only a level 5 Ratatata. Or level 5 Squirtle. They use Scratch Attack. Anything that's being added on, it does indeed end up getting spotted here by his opponent. He's a wall off for Inner Orbiter, does come down here with a couple Evo Chambers to make sure this Queen can stay safe. And make sure that they, like, kind of ball like the opponent here, that's basically what he was going for. This engagement. But he should end up holding very, very easily. And he does have double Evos, so he will be able to upgrade very, very quickly as well. Now, this also does prompt that he could easily go into some, uh, Roach, or, you know, upgrades, plus one melee. There it is, plus one Carapace as well. Does it quite have the mineral for it, but I imagine he's going to add in some Banelings into this as well. Too risky coming back to try and get a little bit of scout to see if there is a third base. See if he can't possibly get in here. Poke his opponent a little bit. Both players playing that macro game. No oh, man, I don't want to play a quick game. Just enjoy the series. It could be a fun series. Wait, some more links of Too Risky are going to wind up joining in. And Too Risky did get a banning. Oh, he's going to go into that Roach War. Start that plus one missile attack. Looks like he favors... That lovely, lovely composition. Actually, getting, uh, as I would say, you're gonna get plus one range. Gonna get a second uh, Evo Chamber here as well. Possibly start that carapace. You did get a Bailing Nest. Looks like we're missing engagement on the other side, talking about the opponent's map. Must have been a pretty juicy Bailing connection. Actually, you look like he just backed off. Facing some wings around the map. Bailing! Two Bailings here. Kind of zone this army out a little bit. Don't want to lose those lings. Anything silly. Inject's coming down here for inner order, trying to get his ling count up, trying to get his army up. Now this is interesting because both players kind of saw what each other did the first game, and now they're able to just kind of play it out and like, yeah, okay. As I say that, however, two bane lings they just run in there and find a pretty decent connection on these lings. Always an uh, interesting time for you mouse over something to catch you like, oh, what just happened here? Anyway, third base is good. Third base against third base. So both players are going to hit that tower. We will go into the Roach Wars once again. It really is just amazing how a lot of players, and like especially the lower leagues, don't decide to play anything kind of cheeky. They just want to kind of macro up, you know. Don't want to lose a game. Kind of nerves, you know, a little bit of that anxiety. It's just, oh, man, but I play another platinum. He could be pretty good, you know. He could, he could be playing a lot better than me. But we're gonna poke in here and get a scout to see if there's anything interesting going on now. Inner Orbiter definitely likes to do a lair in his natural. If he does, opt to try and go to lair attack in the natural base. He does that mostly to kind of fool his opponent and say, "Yeah, there's, there's nothing here." But oh, a couple overlords being sacrificed is out for free trying to get that scouting information that is going to kind of put too risky in a little bit of supply deficit he's going to get that straightened out pretty quickly then more drones popping out for inner orbit as he's going to get his third base saturated meanwhile on the other side of the map we do have third base not saturated just yet inner orbiter trying to get that economic lead Spine crawler to be added on for a little bit of defense, I guess. You know, you're expecting a bit of a run by. I'm not interested to add in any spine crawlers like that. Because he's expecting an aggression from his opponent, which he is indeed. You better catch out here on the map. Ravagers, banelings, and roaches are going to make their way over. Trying to pick off that overlord there. Here we go. The aggression into the third base. Going to evacuate some drones. Trying to find a decent connection with these banelings, but he doesn't really get what he was looking for at all. There's some vile going to range all over this army. And Inner Orbiter looks like he's going to be in a tight situation here. I mean, he, he just traded out some very poorly with some army. He goes ahead and picks off an Overlord, though, so he does supply cap too risky. I mean, if you turn around and take this fight right now, the opponent won't be able to reinforce really, really quickly. Off creep, which means you can kind of take that fight and curse a vile very easily. But in ZBZ, it comes down to a lot in the surface area. He decides to do, see if he decides to rotate around to the right and head back south. 
very good opportunity to do that. This is an army of two risky. He's kind of out of position. You can also kind of sneak around the overlord here if he comes down the ramp and then up through this space here. But too risky with that overlord speed. Going to be able to get the overlord in position to catch any kind of army movement from Inner Orbiter. Who is just maxing out our roaches at this point. He feels it. I guess he feels his opponents just isn't, don't have enough here to defend. But he pushes across the map. Too risky. You're going to have to rotate back over with these uh, roaches. Roaches, however, do have plus one. Or 1-1 one, one versus the one range of Inner Orbiter. The army supply of Inner Orbiter is definitely in favor of Orange. I mean, in his favor. Spine crawlers, though, definitely being a scary factor here. This looking like he wants to take too crazy of a fight just yet. There's some problems finding some decent connections, but fighting on this ramp like this is not where you want to be. Especially your opponent has superior upgrades. I mean, he's just going to keep pushing right in. He's got to back down the ramp. He needs to make the concave swing in his favor. And that's not the place to fight. It's on a ramp like that, guys. Range units on a ramp generally will just die out very, very quickly. First of Bile being thrown down here to try and zone out some of his army. And in order to frantically trying to reinforce and get his lings into his comp. Why are you building banelings? You don't need banelings right now. Banelings aren't going to do anything against these roaches. Of too risky, who just go on home? I mean, honestly, if you could put like two or three, okay, like two or three banelings for the lings, sure. But after that, you really don't need anything else for the roaches but lings. A two two is on the way here, or two one for inner orbiter is on the way. Plus two missile attack did just start up for too risky, so we are going to go ahead into that macro game once again. Here we go, both armies going to clash once more. The army supply is slightly in favor of Too Risky, but Too Risky wants to be the aggressor here. He wants to get out on the map and be able to find some damage. Anyway, here we go, once again, a fight about to happen. These bailings in the back, not going to be able to find a decent connection unless they get positioned a little bit better. Army supplies are in favor of Too Risky at this point. This is going to come back home and play on the defensive advantage once again. It gets Inner Orbiter a little bit of time to max back out. He does get the Army Supply lead once again. He's even in the Worker Supply lead. So, I mean, Inner Orbiter's position right now is definitely a little bit more favorable. But don't rule out Inner Tarisky just yet. He's got an upgrade advantage of that plus one Carapace. And plus two Missile Attack about to kick in. I mean, no Carapace upgrade here for Inner Orbiter. Oh, he does have it now. Bailey's finding some pretty nasty connection, honestly. Corrosive Bile finding a very decent connection, but again, he's just having to back off. He didn't get to fight with his entire army, but he still has the army supply lead. Bailey's rolling in here, finding some splash damage. He even connects with one of his own Bailey's. And he does close out game number two here, as he is just going to keep pressing forward. At this point, this is where Lings are going to come in handy for Too Risky, because uh, the more Lings that you can just reinforce very quickly with these Lings. The Linglongs, the Lingers. But Inner Order is going to bypass these spines and walk right into the natural base. They're going to start finding some economic damage. The Hydra is going to pop out here and get picked off on the ramp. And honestly, Inner Order's position here is a lot more favorable. Like I said, it's just once when he got settled down a little bit and is able to max out, he will go ahead and be able to close out game number two. As he will kill off the lair, which is a lot of text. Now, if you kill off the Hydrogen, I mean, that's you have to have a lair to get a Hydrogen. Uh, and over also just gonna go ahead and reinforce. He needs to get rid of these spine colors for his lings reinforcements and roach reinforcements coming in. Uh, too risky in a tight situation, he may not be able to hold this very, very easily. He's gonna go right to the main base, start killing off the hydrogen. So we go ahead and probably kill off the roach warren as well. But I mean, in order will close out game number two here and tie the series up, which will force to game number three. And GG will get called out and tie the series at one apiece. Right back with you for a game number three in this best of three series. And we are back once again in this ZVZ matchup going to Odyssey LE. And I love how a lot of players just choose like maps they're used to, you know. I'm not knocking it in any shape or form in that regard. I mean, it's just, it's just kind of interesting to see that a lot of the trend is stay to a map you're familiar on. Okay, I mean... Sure, I mean, Inner Orbiter wishing good luck, good luck. 
both players. You two if I'm too risky. And in the top left hand corner is the orange Zerg pieces of Inner Orbiter. From Insight Gaming. And in the bottom right hand corner. From Meep. It is the green Zerg pieces who pulls the extractor trick. Of too risky. Too risky, mate. Too risky. Here we go. We're going into a game number three. The ZVZ matchup. Now, I just hope this one... Honestly, I want to see this one go quick. Because we've had two long roach battles. I would like to see some kind of crazy baneling shenanigans this time around. You know, just, just to change up the flow of the game a little bit. We do have pool first for too risky. Now, trends dictate that he will go and expand after. There goes Mr. Dro. Mr. Dro going to go and morph into a uh, hatchery here. All right. So again, we have hatch first in the pool for inner orbiter. Again, both players are sticking to what they're used to. Nothing too cheeky, nothing too crazy. I love the Terran music in his EVZ. Like, uh, the slow country bluegrass type stuff going on in the music there. And then it just picks up and gets really good. Mm. Also, it picks up when there's no action. Blizzard, make sure you guys uh, have music that picks up like when the action starts. I was like, alright, here we go, boys. We're going to see some crazy shenanigans come out. But no, uh, we do have six links from both players. Speed's starting up about the same time. So we will be uh, going into metabolic boost on both sides. Queen's being added off for inner orbiter. He's going to be able to use these queens in case some kind of aggression does get by to close off this ramp very easily. You know... Just both players sticking to what they're used to. It's all fine and dandy, but when you do that, like a three game series, I will always try to play some crazy style to change up the flow of the game. Like, if uh, I'm doing a three game series for one, I'll go into, say, Banshees one game, maybe some Reapers a second, and do like a, just a general bio play. And then maybe just like a proxy, you know, just just to keep the flow of the game different and keep your opponent on your toes. But uh, ZVZ is a bear match, so you know you're just sticking to the, what you can do in ZVZ, which is going to be that Ling Bane Ling composition coming out from both players. If Bane Ling that's going to finish up for too risky first, which means Ender Orbital will have to be on his toes when these Bane Lings do start to roll in. Everything is very micro intensive. Spine crawler being added on for a little bit of extra defense. I see an Evo Chamber added in to close off Big Mama Queen. Did it get picked off? Just have a lot round of drones being added on, and Tyrisky is going into the Roach Form. First Baneling is on the way. And Tyrisky will get a full scout of the main base before the Queen can go ahead and clean up this Overlord. So all in all, just both players, you know, very passive play. Crazy coming out. One Baneling being sent out here to kind of hold position at the top of the ramp in case a swarm of Lings does decide to run in here. Where are the Lings of Too Risky? There should be six Lings on the map. There they are. We go ahead and morph them into some Banelings as well. The two Scouting Lings coming out here are going to trigger this Baneling at the top of the ramp, assuming they go up. That is going to prompt Inner Orbiter to move out. Now, he has a Roach Worm on the way, and plus, the uh, Evo Chamber is on the way for his opponent as well. The timing is a little bit off here. The only reason we've seeing two Risky start that plus one upgrade sooner. Now, this is a very bad timing for him to be trying to transition to Roach. With his opponent knocking on his doorstep, this is not the best time to be a Roach player trying to transition into Roaches here. I guess a Ling Bane player. Just lost your third base. Got to pick up the drone. This could be... Alright! Alright, that, that'll definitely defend very, very easily. Now his legs aren't going to get anything done. 
There's nothing doing here for Inner Orbiter as he just, uh, you know, a very nasty Baneling connection. He's cleaned up his entire army supply of Lings. But he is going to opt for a third base. Not too risky. No, he just cleaned up the Lings. He isn't going to push out just yet. He just wants to max on Roaches. He wants to get 1-1 one, one on the way. Actually, which is interesting here is that... Inner Orbiter is going for the plus one missile attack, the plus one carapace, which is going to cancel out the upgrade of plus one missile attack. We get carapace on the way now. Start the carapace upgrade, please. Thank you. You have the money for it. You don't have the gas for it. Hey, saturate your gases. What are you doing? Hey! Why is there no extractor here? Build extractors. Guys, if you're going to get roaches, you need more than one gas. At least Inner Orbiter has got his gas is saturated. You got three gas for it. A Hydra Den covered in. I mean, this should be Inner Orbiter's game at this point. Like, his opponent not having the gas count he needs for his Roach army is definitely going to wind up killing him. He's probably trying to figure out why couldn't I build any Roaches? And that's exactly why you can't build Roaches, mate. because you don't have the gas for the Roaches. Especially if you go to start the Carapace. Now, Inner Orbiter's his economy has been a much better situation. Third base is going to finish up here. If he comes down to the fin. Go Banelings are gonna come down here, but this third base might actually end up falling before these Banelings get here. We can let this go. Alright. Sacrificing a new third base. I don't understand why he didn't decide to take that fight. Or at least shoot the lings off. Uh, Alright, okay, alright, you do you. Anyway, orange is going to march across the map to hit green back. At the green back. Of course, now he's just going to turn around and go right back home. That cast a curse, man. You try to predict what the players are going to do. And then they just turn around and do something different. Like, okay. Lurker den! So it looks like Inner Orbiter wants to go into the Lurker tech. Yeah. Roach speed about to kick in. Hydra speed about to kick in. Is Hydra speed done? Uh, he doesn't have his hydro speed yet, so these hydros are basically just going to go right to lurkers as soon as they're done. He's adding on another gas. Looks like too risky. He's trying to find a little bit of damage here. I mean, these links were in position to try and catch an hatchery from going down somewhere. But Inner Orbit is just going to go ahead and move across the map. The Hydra is getting hung up on some overlords in the back. It is going to supply cap too risky after killing that overlord. Our supply is not in favor of Inner Orbiter at all. But the upgrade advantage is, so he might be able to find a decent engagement here. As the opponent is just trying to max out on Roaches. Once his Lurker Den does kick in and there's no Ravagers added in, or no way for too risky to deal with the Lurkers, he's going to be in a really, really good situation here because the uh, Inner Orbiter will be able to just take a fight. Uh, Overlord being picked off here. Six overlords about to finish up, so the supply cap will be freed up very quickly. But again, this does prompt a bit of an awkward situation. Inner Orbiter is back on two base to three base of his opponent. Hey, hey, why did you build these extractors if you're not going to use for gas? I guess you're saving drones. That's cool. Go ahead and take his gas in his main base. So, uh, yeah, a bit of a lull here in this engagement, or in this game. As the Lurkers are on the way, finally. And Orbit is waiting for that plus two missile attack to come out as well. Both players getting their upgrades kicking in. It just seems like for this entire series, both players are still trying to feel each other out a little bit. I'm going to see how they're going to respond to each other. What's funny is, Inner Orbit actually went for a composition that... Too risky used in game number one. Where does he this? Hey, he's just guessing that that's going to be there. He will come over and be able to kill that off. Get the cancel. Inner Order doesn't come down here to defend this, so it is. Meanwhile, the main army of Too Risky is just still hanging out back home. He does rebuild it. There are lurkers in play. And I don't see any Ravagers being added on. I really want to see some Ravagers added into this composition to Risky. You're going to need them in order to counter these uh, Lurkers coming in. 
just go ahead and start up four of them. Like he can hear me. Okay, at the top of the ramp here, the lings are going to get found. So Bailey's rolling in. Gonna start to try and find some connections of their own. Picking up some roaches with them. Lurkers are going to get burrowed right here on top of this ramp. Now, Carissa Bile can come down very, very easily. As soon as he positions where these lurkers are with the detection here, does allow him to just snipe out that Ari. Now, it looks like Edward is really in a tight, really, really bad position here. He doesn't have the Ari supply. He's running it back across the map, and he's going to have to rebuild and defend at home if he wants to stay in this game. I mean, he hasn't had a third base up this entire game. A bit of a miss rally on these Hydras. Or Lurker could about to finish up with the detection here. Won't be that big of a deal. He's going to catch his lurkers just now burrowing. He can get a pretty decent engagement here. These lurkers do get connected on by these ravagers. First of battle is scary, scary skill. A tool for the zergs to use in this situation. Also, a lot of these ra ro roaches were just like almost shredded. Almost instantaneously from this many lurkers. The lurking is continuing. Not lurking, it is continuing. But this situation, I mean, is a Zerg, I'm not really comfortable in ZVZ, obviously. All the overlords being rallied across the map. Banelings being added on. Again, I don't know why you keep building Banelings into this. Banelings aren't what you need. Especially when there aren't any Lings in this army. It's Roach Hydra at this point. The Ling composition isn't going to work anymore. Is uh, in order to have the range upgrade yet? Okay, he finally got his Hydra range speed. The DPS is going to go up from these Hydras. Looks like he's going to break off a little attack force to swing around to the other side. While trying to keep his opponent here. And focus on this engagement. Now, there are no Ravagers in the mix for Inner Orbiter to actually use anything with it, to do any damage with. So he's just trying to poke and find some damage around the map. He will end up getting this base up here in the top, or in his fourth. Back to your army, that is. All these bangs are going to crash into the concave and the roaches just get cleaned up almost immediately. At this point, you just have enough, more than enough to walk on top of these workers and kill this off. Especially if you're going to pick up any more free army here. That's a really nice move Inner Orbiter made there to come over here and hit this fourth base. But then he just brought his army back. He never killed the base. He could have killed that base and then brought his army back or even continued into the natural and just started doing more damage. I mean... And put too risky back on like a back foot there and get ahead the base count as well so like a this opportunity there might also end up putting this game more into risky's favor infestation pit is on the way so they're already trying to move up to that hive tech he's trying to buy time i imagine he wants to go into maybe some ultras he needs to start his hive if he's going to do that which would be a really interesting transition here. It has worked in the past. He's actually building links. He just doesn't have money for uh, or anything else here, really. I mean, he has gas, but he's always running out of money. Running out of mineral. He needs more mineral. A couple of lurkers going to get caught out in the open almost for free. Only going to get one shot off before Curse of Bile does pick them off. And in order, flooding more links in from everywhere. He needs to gauge at the same time. And that run into a command move. Ay ay ay! That's a disaster, mate. This is one of the situations. This is like you don't fight like this. This is not how you win the game. If you're gonna fight, you need to surround the army with your lings. For these workers to really get a maximum effect, because throw some bile. The ravagers are just gonna be able to start picking you off like a little bit at a time. I mean, if you can bypass your opponent's army, get in here and find some damage. You know, kill some overlords, sure. Supply cap them, get some overlord kills. I really would have rather seen you go into the natural here and just, you know, kill some drones, do some economic damage, did something there. Your hive is almost done. You just need to buy yourself more time. I think that's exactly what he was trying to do, but you got some lurkers here. Move these lurkers down to this third base and use them to start harassing you. You know, pull your opponent back to clean that up. The more hydras are going to pop out. The hive is about done and he's got to get Ultras. He has to get Ultras to stay in this game. The Ultra transition is exactly what he needs. There's nothing else at tier 3 that will really help unless you go into Spire and get Broodies, but that's going to be way more of a tech swap than what you need. Just throw down the Ultra Cavern or get Adrenal Glands. Adrenal Glands will do a wonders here for you as well. 
Or if we can get more banelings once again. 20 more ban one more banelings on the production tab. He's gonna lose his third base. Now this is gonna be the last stand for Ender Orbiter. I mean this this is it. Like he has nothing left. The lurkers finally get moved out here. Ender dueling some damage to this third base. Obviously you're gonna get more in. He's just gonna go up into the natural base. He is finding some damage with these uh lurkers. Need the burrow once again, burrow! All the drones are just gonna get pulled away. Finally burrowing them. Overseer does rejoin the army here, so he will be able to deal with these lurkers very, very easily. But it bought him some more time. Now, again, not having the mineral account here now, he had a bank, at which point he could have gone into ultras, but he just doesn't have a detect or an economy for it. Now, the banelings do find a pretty decent connection here. He did sacrifice a lot of them, though. A lot of these banelings aren't really finding any more damage other than that. He's just sticking to this Hydra baneling composition. This isn't going to work against Roach Ravager. Especially when your opponent has better upgrades. Like, that's just what it comes down to. Upgrades are actually identical. But he hasn't been able to get another base up. I might actually pop the GG right here and now. In order to trying to get a gold base behind this, he needs something to get his economy back. He's not getting what he did, you know, a good engagement here. It's a Roach Ravager composition is more than enough to deal with the Lurkers. And you don't have really need to go to like the tier 3 at all as you can see by the looks of it. I do feel had he gone to Ultra Tech or something along that line. Lol, the pun there. Ultra Tech. He would have been in a much better position to take a fight. These Banelings really don't do any damage to this army anymore. The DPS and the army supply is just way out what he or outmatching what he can handle. At which point, GG man is going to be called out at 2-1, too risky in the end, in week number 3. Guys, we're going to go ahead and take another quick break. We have a couple more groups to go. I'll be right back with you guys. Or, I think we move into...